Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you the 10 third-party Mac apps that I rely on. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now, of course, I try to use mostly Apple apps when doing things. I use Pages, Numbers, Keynote, iMovie, Final Cut Pro, and all of those. But I do need some third-party apps to get my work done, either making these MacMost tutorials or doing other things like app development or website development. But I know I get asked about which third-party apps I use a lot, so here we go. So the app I spend most of my time in is ScreenFlow. It's an app that will record the screen and your camera and your microphone all at the same time. It will even record your iPhone or iPad at the same time and put them in separate tracks and then has all sorts of tools for making the types of videos that I make. It's excellent if you need to do screen capture with advanced options for teaching or making online courses. Next, here's a little free text editor I use called Cot Editor. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not really sure. But it's based on open source and it's a plain text editor that you can use instead of TextEdit. It doesn't do the rich text stuff that TextEdit does. Just the plain text stuff. And it's got a lot of advanced features that put it on par with some more advanced coding tools. But I use it just to create simple text files to take notes and do all sorts of things throughout the day. When it comes to graphics and image editing, the tool I use the most by far is Pixelmator Pro. I've used a lot of different tools over the years. In the last few years I've really just been using Pixelmator Pro more and more. So I use it to edit images like creating the thumbnails for Mac most videos or graphics for any of the games I develop. Now since I use my Mac all day, sometimes I want to automate some things beyond what you can do with say the Shortcuts app or Automator. And for that I use a tool called Keyboard Maestro. It's not in the App Store because it does some advanced things with controlling the system. But you can get it from the website. It's well known and been around for years. And you can do things like write scripts that imitate clicks and selections on the screen and all of that. So I've got a bunch of different macros set up in Keyboard Maestro just to make my work easier every day. Now since I do have a bunch of different websites that I maintain, I need a way to communicate with them. So you need a file transfer app. So the one I've been using for more than a decade is Transmit. and You can get that in the App Store. and It's a basic tool that allows you to upload and edit files on your website. Every once in a while I need to work with sound files. So you need a sound editor to do that. One really doesn't come with your Mac. GarageBand could do some things but it's more music based. I use Audacity which is a really popular tool uh, that you can get for free. You have to get it on the web because it's not in the App Store. But if you handle sound files chances are you probably already know about Audacity and it's a tool that a lot of people use. Here's a tool I don't really use per se although my Mac is always running it. So I do an online backup. I've got my Time Machine backup locally and my second backup is online and off site. So if something happens to my computer and my Time Machine drive at the same time like a localized disaster I have a copy of all my data that's updated all the time off site. And there are a bunch of different companies that will do this. I use Backblaze which is pretty popular among Mac users. Now I'm a huge fan of using iCloud and Keychain to store passwords. And that's now my primary password manager. But I've been using 1Password for a long time and I still use it. It's really not that hard to actually keep your passwords in both 1Password or another tool like it and also in iCloud at the same time and then to pull them for wherever it's convenient. But you can usually do other things like having secure notes or having like safe codes or padlock codes, things like that. It doesn't really cost that much and it's nice to have another place where I can store things securely. Now even before the pandemic I used Zoom because it was a really easy way to actually make podcasts. I was using it as an audio tool. You can just record a bunch of people in different locations and you got the file and, and you can use that as a podcast. But now of course it's very useful because so many different online meetings take place online using Zoom. It seems to be the primary tool. So I use it for that. And while FaceTime is also a good tool for this, Zoom has a ton of features and can easily allow you to record things things and of course it's completely cross-platform. And the last one I'm going to mention will make a lot of people laugh because this is my own tool. It's called Clip Tools and it's a clipboard manager. 
So in the past when I've talked about which third party apps I use I always talk about the clipboard manager I use. Well now I make my own so of course I'm using my own. So you can get Clip Tools. It's completely free from the Mac App Store. Here's the page that lists all of its abilities at my site. And it does a lot more than being a clipboard manager. It can do calculations and all sorts of things. Well you don't need to choose Clip Tools as your tool. I definitely do recommend you choose some sort of clipboard manager so you've got some sort of history on your clipboard. It makes doing tasks like writing or editing so much easier. Now I want to give a few honorable mentions. First OBS Studio which I haven't really been using recently but if I have to do any live stuff on YouTube I use OBS Studio to basically stream it to YouTube and you can stream to other things as well. It's great for any live presentations and things that you need to stream. Also I use some tools from some major companies like for instance Microsoft and Adobe. I have subscriptions to both of their cloud app services. So I have at my disposal things like Word and Excel and Photoshop and Illustrator and Animate. And sometimes I use those tools for things. They're not really things I rely on now but since I work on my Mac full time and I'm always experimenting and trying new things I very often find it's handy to have all of those standard tools around. And finally I also have a collection of other browsers around as well even though I use Safari for just about everything. There's nothing wrong with having other browsers around in case you need them even if you use Safari as your primary one. So there's a look at the third party apps that I use all the time in addition to all of the native Apple apps. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.